Has your night under the stars ever ended abruptly because your optics have fogged over from dew? I'm here to tell you all about dew control systems up next on Night Sky Voyager. Hi there, I'm Trevor from Night Sky Voyager and I'm here with three telescopes of each of the major designs that you'll find on the market today. A refractor, a schmidt cassegrain and a Newtonian reflector. Each of these telescope designs is inherently different, which means that when it comes to controlling dew, you need different options as well. Today, we're going to go over how you can mitigate dew on all three major telescope designs, as well as some of the accessories that you may be needing to keep you observing throughout the night. Dew is simply condensation that forms on your gear when its temperature drops below that of the dew point of the air around it. It is simply water that is pulled from the humidity in the air around us and forms on your telescope. It's the exact same principle as a cold glass of water sitting outside on a hot day where the humidity condenses on the outside of the glass and makes it wet. The same thing happens on our equipment. And while corrector plates and secondary mirrors are prone to it, accessories are especially susceptible to do as well because they contain small glass elements that are close to the ambient air. The temperature of them drops more rapidly below the dew point and they fog over. If you're someone who relies on finder scopes to do star hopping to locate objects, doing over on your accessories will bring a quick end to your evening. There are two methods of dew control that are important for you to know about. The first is passive dew control. Passive dew control functions by extending the tube of the telescope and creating a pocket of warmer air around the objective lens or corrector plate. This keeps the temperature a little bit higher and extends the amount of time you have before your optics do over. On the other hand, we have active dew control. Active dew control relies on electricity to generate heat. Heat is conducted through these heater straps which are wrapped around the objective lens of your telescope. The heater straps are then connected to a dew heater control box via this cable. Heater straps usually terminate in a RCA jack type connector, which plugs directly into the heater control box. These active dew heaters will function all night long, whereas passive dew control only functions as long as that pocket of warm air remains inside the dew shield. In order to have an effective active dew control system, you'll need access to a 12 volt power supply like this lightweight lithium ion battery, but you'll also need a dew controller box. I especially like these ones that have the individual dials so that you can tr control the amount of heat going to each element in your system. Finally, you'll need dew heater straps for each of the elements in your system so that they can provide stable, controllable heat to each part of your telescope and finder scope system as the night goes on. If you want a DIY project, check out my video on how I made my own heated eyepiece case. Let's take a closer look at the different types of telescopes and the methods used to control dew formation on them. We'll start with the Newtonian reflector, then talk a little bit about accessories, move on to a Schmidt Cassegrain, and wrap up with a refractor. Newtonian reflector functions by gathering light at the large primary objective mirror at the far end of the telescope and reflecting it up towards here, which is the secondary mirror, which is angled out towards the eyepiece that you view through. Primary mirrors are usually made of large thick glass and because they're deep in the telescope, generally do not do over, although they do sometimes. Much more common is for secondary mirrors to do over because they're close to the ambient air temperature and they are also much thinner glass. The way to mitigate dew on your secondary mirror is by having some sort of electric heat source on the rear. This telescope has a small heater that is adhered to the back side of the secondary mirror and this wiring runs up the spider and out over here and goes down to my dew controller over here. One thing that's nice about this secondary dew heater specifically 
is that it has a sensor that detects what the ambient air temperature is and compares it to the difference in the temperature of the mirror. And so it only adds heat when it needs to or to it. You supply constant 12 volt power to it and it does the rest. As I mentioned, primary mirrors generally don't do over. However, in case they do, there are some options. This telescope has a fan on the side and also on the rear. These fans are here not only to help the mirror come to ambient temperature quickly, but to also keep air currents blowing, which inhibits dew formation. Let's quickly review dew control for reflecting telescopes. In most cases, the primary mirror doesn't require active dew control. The glass is quite thick, allowing it to retain heat well into the night, and its recessed position inside the optical tube provides a degree of passive protection from moisture. You may notice small fans positioned near the primary mirror. These are mainly used to help the mirror reach ambient temperature for better optical performance, though they can also incidentally reduce the likelihood of dew formation. The secondary mirror, however, is a different story. Because it's made of thinner glass and sits more exposed, it's far more prone to dewing. Active dew control is essential here, typically in the form of a small heater attached to the back of the mirror. The exact design varies depending on the telescope model. Next up, we'll discuss dew control for accessories and finder scopes, which are also susceptible to moisture buildup. It's also critical to consider the impacts of dew on your eyepieces and finder scopes. On a manual telescope like this, where I'm reliant on the finder scopes to constantly be looking for objects in the sky. I've attached heaters to my red dot finder as well as the objective and eyepiece of this right angle finder scope. This keeps them dew free so that I continue looking for objects all night long. I also have a dew heater strap attached to my eyepiece here. Because these accessories often have very small glass elements, they tend to do up quickly, long before any of your other optics will. All of these components are powered through the dew heater control box, which is down here. I really like this one from Thousand Oaks Optical, and I've been using it for many years. It has four controllable outputs across the top and one that applies constant voltage that comes out the side. I use the one that supplies constant voltage on my secondary mirror, whereas the controllable ones are tied into each of my components. This extra one over here is the one that goes to the eyepiece. I don't need that one all the time, and so I only leave it on or plug it in when I need it. Most active dew control systems run off of 12 volt direct current, which can be supplied from a battery. However, you also need a dew controller that will send the power to your different heating elements. Most of these dew controllers run off of RCA jacks as that has been the standard for these for many years. To get power to the controller box, you'll also notice that most of the options use these 12 volt cigarette lighter style adapters. However, you can also find some that use modern barrel jacks or you can modify your equipment on your own to utilize barrel jacks if you're handy with a soldering iron. These lithium ion batteries are very light and easy to carry around. About 10 years ago, we used to rely on lead acid deep cycle marine batteries, especially for long overnight observing sessions. Those could sometimes weigh in excess of 60 or 70 pounds. Boy, am I glad that we have these lithium ion batteries now, which can be lifted with one hand. Next up are Schmidt Cassegrains, or SCTs. Their design makes them especially prone to do, so they need a bit more attention. Schmidt Cassegrains are a type of catadioptric telescope that rely on a corrector plate and mirrors to form the image. The corrector plate is this thin piece of glass that's up here at the front of the telescope. Because it is thin and it is also near the end of the telescope, they have tendency to do up very rapidly. I have some active dew heating 
applied to this telescope, Celestron makes this wonderful dew heater ring that replaces the stock retaining ring on these telescopes. You unscrew it and put this on and plug in this heater and send it to your dew controller and it will apply a steady mild heat all night long. You can also upgrade it to have this. Uh, there's a box that Celestron makes that will uh, attach to the underside of the telescope and it will detect the ambient air temperature compared to the temperature of the corrector plate and will apply heat only when needed but it's very expensive and I find using a regular dew controller adequate. This Schmidt Cassegrain from Celestron also has passive dew control in the form of this aluminum dew shield which functions by moving the corrector plate effectively further away from the ambient air. It simply clips on to the end of the telescope and is ready to go. Passive dew control will usually buy you some time, but having active dew control, as I mentioned earlier, is better for long observing sessions. Fortunately, these passive dew shields on Schmidt Cassegrains are not supplied with them when you purchase them. And they are usually bought as an aftermarket accessory. In review, SCTs are very susceptible to dew formation especially on their thin glass corrector plate. They can benefit from a passive dew shield, but these are never included with them when you buy the telescope. For active dew control, you can use traditional heater straps around the corrector plate, but Celestron makes a heater ring that perfectly integrates into the system and can run off of most dew controller units. This is a refractor telescope, which is the stereotypical telescope design that relies upon a lens at the far end to gather light and direct it towards your eye. Because the lens is at the end of the uh, optical tube, similar to a schmidt cassegrain they tend to do up rather quickly as well. However, every refractor that I've ever seen comes from the factory with a dew shield on it already. This goes a long way in dew prevention, but as you can see on this telescope, I've added a heater strap as well so that I can have some active dew heating. It's very important to have a combination of passive and active dew heating, especially if you're going to be observing all throughout the night. As you can see, I've also added active dew heating to this telescope by means of a heater strap. To recap, refractors are susceptible to do in a manner similar to SCTs because their objective is relatively exposed. However, refractors always come with an integrated dew shield to supply some passive dew control. You should definitely be running active dew control on your objective lens, finder scopes, and maybe even your diagonal. Similar to my reflector, this telescope is all manual and I find objects by star hopping. I only have one set of dew heater straps, but normally I would put straps on the objective and eyepiece of this finder scope. Some people also prefer to wrap their diagonal with a heater strap, especially during long observing sessions to keep that dew free. This telescope also has a red dot finder in the form of a telrad, which I have modified for dew control. As you can see, I have a RCA jack over here that is connected to some wiring that then connects to a small resistor that I've placed under the glass of the finder scope. When you apply 12 volt direct current to this, the resistor slightly heats up and it's enough to keep the glass clear all night long. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see how I made this. Telrads also have the option of this passive dew heating through this cover that flips up and over. In summary, dew will always be a problem when the temperature of your equipment drops below the temperature of the dew point of the air around us and appears as a fog or condensation on your equipment. 
In order to mitigate the effects of dew, we focus on both passive and active dew control. Passive dew control is something that you can put on your telescope and will usually buy you a limited amount of time before the temperature drops below the dew point. Active dew control, on the other hand, runs off of electricity and utilizes heat to mildly heat up your equipment to keep it dew free. I hope you found this information useful. I wish I would have had someone tell me about it when I first got into amateur astronomy. The first time that I went to Cherry Springs State Park in Pennsylvania for a night of long observing, I didn't have any dew control. And on our first clear night, I was totally dewed out within the first hour. What a disappointment. This information will ensure that you have dew-free nights all night long. Have you had any experiences like I did? If you did, leave them in the comments. If you found this information useful, make sure that you like the video, subscribe to my channel Night Sky Voyager, and ring the bell so that you're notified when future videos are posted. And as always, clear skies and keep looking up.